in his speech at the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the institution of the Synod of Bishops, Pope Francis not only defined the nature of the church, but also specified the direction in which church reforms should move. He said, and I quote, the path of synodality is the path that God expects of the church of the third millennium. What the Lord asks us is already contained in a sense in the word synod, which means walking together, lay pastors, bishop of Rome. Here, the reference to the third millennium is key to the interpretation of synodality because it represents the overcoming of a pyramidal and hierarchical institutional model and of a homogenizing way of carrying out evangelization. Both phenomena were born in the second millennium and implemented by the Gregorian reforms and the Council of Trent. They are still present today in our lifestyles, our communicative dynamics and our relationships revealing a fissure in the reception of the Second Vatican Council. That is why following Pope Paul VI, Pope Francis wants to deepen the reform of the church in light of the spirit, the text and the method of the council. That means in the words of the International Theological Commission's document on synodality that, and I quote, although synodality is not explicitly found as a term or a concept in the teachings of the Vatican II, it is fair to say that synodality is at the heart of the work of renewal the council was encouraging. The International Theological Commission describes synodality as a constitutive dimension of the whole church because it characterizes the church's specific way of living and working, modus vivendi et operandi, and it characterizes more precisely an ecclesial way of proceeding, meaning that it is a constituent process, a constituent reality, rather than simply a particular practice or an event such as a synod or a council. Because synodality involves the constant renew of lifestyles of discernment practices, of decision-making and taking at all levels and structures of governance in the church. It is the application of the classical medieval practices according to which what affects everyone must be discussed and approved by everyone. There have been a lot of definitions on synodality. But the, is the way in which we can refer to it as a new ecclesial model embodies a process that is set in motion an ecclesiogenesis that will generate an ecclesial way of being church, of practicing church, of making church, and therefore engenders a structuring transversal spirit of ecclesiality. ecclesiality. It is a new mark of the church a novel ecclesial hermeneutics that reconfigures the identities and the relationships among all ecclesial subjects, laity, presbyters, religious, bishops, and the Pope. It also reconfigures the way in which the organization and the institution of the church, the model is articulated and generated from the local churches of it is a recognition of the ecclesiology of the local churches, church as a church of churches. Synodality is therefore not only a spirit, but it also a process of reconfiguration, of renewal, of reform, of relationships and processes, of structures, of mentalities in the whole church. Francis affirms that this new institutional model is a synodal church, and he says, I quote, a synodal church is a church that listens because it is aware that listening is more than hearing. Continues Francis saying, it is a reciprocal listening in which everyone, faithful people, Episcopal College, Bishop of Rome has something to learn. Each one listening to the others and all listening to the spirit 
the spirit of truth in order to know what the spirit is saying to the churches. To implement this new way of proceeding, we are uh, invited to listen to one another, to discern in common pastoral decisions, to implement them together, but most of all, to participate, recognizing that each person, each ecclesial subject, each institution in the society is a mediation through which the spirit is speaking to the church. Therefore, synodality not only implies uh, hearing the gospel, the prayer, the dialogue, the interaction together as communities, but it also implies the confrontation of different point of view, the integration and inclusiveness of diversity in the church. Therefore, it is not a listening only through the traditional mediations, as I said, gospel prayer, but it also involves a new way of relating to each other face to face in an ambience where dialogue is possible, where conversion through common discernment of different points of view is uh, possible and enables a process of changing in the subjects and in the mentalities and in the structures of the church. This method allows everyone to freely express the points of view with an attitude of openness to learning and relearning new ways of seeing and valuing issues in life and in the church. In this way, what is heard and discerned from the people should then find ecclesial channels and structures, Francis calls them concrete mediations, that link what has been listening to the magisterial decisions. It's a new mentality that implies developing a more complex and complete understanding of the theology of the census fide fidelium and how the listening to the other implies a bond, a link to the decisions of the uh, episcopal, to the uh, decisions of the hierarchy in the church. We can speak of a synodal style that involves all these communicative attitudes, listening, discerning, dialogue, but always in common, and also the co-sharing of the exercise of power based on the baptism and the participation of the common priesthood of all the faithful towards the building, towards the building of the consensus and the praxis of building consensus in the church, as Bishop Saint Cyprian in the first millennium taught us. He always said that he did everything, consulting his presbyterate and then building consensus with the whole people of God. Two keys in a synodal church, the consultation process and the consensus building process. The true reform involved this conversion of the mentalities and the reform of the structures when we see all around us clericalized mentalities and structures. That implies that we can assume synodality as a process that generates an ecclesial way of proceeding that starts from below and more than thematize is lived through relationships that may help us to start changes and reforms in the church. Therefore, synodality starts from pastoral conversions, a concept that comes from the Latin American Episcopal Conference in 1992 in Santo Domingo. And then it is received in 2007 in Aparecida, the fifth Latin American uh, Bishops Conference and incorporated in Evangelii Gaudium in 2013 by Pope Francis. And pastoral conversion related to relationships of power and authority that led to a model of living church that was a pyramidal model, a hierarchical model that needed to be transformed through the pastoral experience 
into horizontal relationships of being and constructing church based on the dignity of all by virtue of baptism and by the participation of the common priesthood of all faithful. All this requires a conversion of our mentalities and a reform of our church structures. We can say that synodality is authentic, not only when it involves the listening to one another, this is one of the steps, but also when we walk together all the ecclesial processes at all levels in the church. That means it is realized when we gather together to discern in common and activate processes of decision-making, decision-elaborating, and decision-taking that involve the participation of the whole people of God. Therefore, it is important to understand, as the International Theological Commission's document on synodality says, that it is not only about praying, about dialoguing, analyzing, but all these communicative dynamics are with the scope of decision-making by all the faithful in the church, leading then to a decision taken by the authorities of the church. It is not a matter of simply voting of a majority. It is also a recognition of the minorities, of those voices of the faithful and of those voices in society that are requesting and claiming changes in the church. Therefore, it is a new ecclesial culture around consensus. And as I said, the practice of Bishop St. Cyprian taking counsel and building consensus is one of the models that we can uh, bring today to initiate these processes towards a synodal church. The challenge is to construct, to build a new institutional model in a synodal key for the church in the third millennium. <laughs>